This podium feels very like, like, good evening. We are gathered here today to celebrate this crazy thing called life. Hey, everybody. My name's Eric. I am on the board of Shy Hack Night. Uh, and I've been coming for a while, not as long as Derek, um, but I am just going to share briefly some poorly prepared remarks about uh, how Shy Hack Night has affected my life um, through a series of mostly pictures that I can't see, uh, <laughs> but it's okay. You'll be able to see them. Um, so I've kind of was thinking and reflecting on this. It was really interesting, uh, especially for me, because I love thinking and reflecting about myself. Um, but hopefully you find it interesting too. I was also thinking about Shy Hack Night and how when I first started coming, I didn't really know what hack meant. I didn't know how to code. I didn't work in tech. Um, and I always really liked this definition that we kind of had of like hacking as being uh, taking something that already exists and repurposing it for something else. I also looked up some definitions on Urban Dictionary, which I wanted to share with y'all because I thought they were pretty great. Uh, so w one part of uh, a, a definition is to jury rig or improvise something inelegant but effective, usually as a temporary solution to a problem. Uh, another bit that stuck out to me was a clever or elegant technical accomplishment, especially one with a playful or prankish bent. Uh, and then I also like the last definition I found, which is a cheap, mediocre, or second-rate practitioner. Uh, for those of us with imposter syndrome in the audience, that might ring true for you. Um, and that kind of like is how I shy hacked my life. So I started uh, early on. Uh, here's a picture of uh, my old life, what I used to look like uh, as a young, younger person. Um, so I first moved to Chicago as mostly a musician and an artist. Um, and began getting involved in local politics around like 2014. Uh, that's me in Obama's office when he uh, was in the state, uh, was he state center or state house of representatives? It was a long time ago. Anyways, um, and then around that time, I first heard about Shy Hack Night uh, and came to an event when it was up at 1871. I tried to see if there was a footage I could find of me, but you'll just have to pretend that I'm in this poorly pixelated video somewhere, because I totally was uh, somewhere around like number 70 or 30. I don't know. I forgot. So um, you, I also found some, some footage when we moved to uh, 1871. Uh, you can see, an, and look how just like how much higher fidelity uh, media has gotten on the internet. Isn't that great? Um, so a lot of the reasons like why I first started coming, like I said, I didn't really know how to code. I just kind of thought it was interesting. It felt like relevant to my life. There uh, were a lot of people talking about stuff that felt relevant. Um, a lot of breakout groups were organized by topic back then. So there was like a transportation breakout group, an education breakout group, an environment. And at the time, I was doing work in transportation. And so it seemed pretty clear to me. And I was like, oh, every Tuesday, there's free deep dish pizza, a bunch of interesting people who are talking about stuff that I'm curious about, and a topic that I, is in a field that I work in. Pretty cool. So I went like once or twice and then stopped coming. Uh, and I didn't come back for like another year or so. Uh, and then I started attending regularly. Um, and I just found, you know, this stuff going on interesting, but I, I wasn't really like as directly involved. Uh, it was mostly like free food and a place to talk every week. Um, but then as I continued to go, I got more involved. Um, and so this is some photos of me at some conferences I went to in 2015, which I heard about through Shy Hack Night. We went to Transparency Camp in DC, uh, went to a Code for America summit and like really kind of just started getting exposed to more people working in these fields, just kind of talking to them, finding what's interesting, uh, you know, figuring out ways to, you know, travel to different cities and learn, learn new stuff. And around this time is when I started teaching myself how to code largely through coming to Shy Hack Night every week and really kind of started to see it as something that I was interested in doing. So I started working in breakout groups and participating uh, and, you know, potentially like in mind thinking, you know, this could be something that I could do for a living that I was also looking for a way to have positive social in impact, but also like do it in a way that felt sustainable for myself personally. Um, and this was a really key uh, moment in my life for me and for the people I was involved with who are part of this community who are so willing to help me answer questions about 
you know, how do I run this script or where do I do this or like how do I debug something? And uh, I don't have time to talk about it, but it stands in my mind as I can think of very uh, significant moments for me uh, in learning how to learn this sort of stuff with like programming and stuff that for those people was probably like, oh, okay, like, uh, you know, I code a lot in Python. So it's like, I remember when someone taught me to how to do DIR or VARS to see like, oh, variables or methods of a function you're trying to run. I was like, whoa, okay, so I can keep going with that. Um, and, you know, that's a huge part of learning and getting involved. And so over time, that kind of led to uh, what I would say acceptance. You know, I started getting more involved. I started thinking of myself with the identity of someone who is, was a civic technologist. Uh, and over this time, like I think as a community too, we started to learn the sort of longer term, medium or longer term effects of projects and actions and try to think with more responsibility and focus on accessibility. And that was a lot of what we did. And I was able to, as a professional, kind of adopt this attitude, even in like the work that I'm doing to try to make stuff accessible, teach people how to use technology and use it myself. Uh, we did satellite events all over the city where we uh, tried to help people engage in these sort of ways. And I don't even know how much time I have left. Um, Okay, I'll keep going. Um, and so this is kind of a phase that I would say I'm still at in some ways too, just learning how to, how to operationalize all the stuff that I learned at Shy Hack Night as a job, you know, and that's something I've been doing for a couple of years now. Um, and so kind of like large takeaways I was thinking about, um, you know, like five hours ago <laughs> when I was putting together this talk. Uh, for people who are new, uh, you know, these things, like, it takes time to learn how to do this stuff, you know? Uh, and it's easier to see in retrospect. I, I think, you know, there's at least one person who said they were just learning how to code. And it's okay to take your time and not expect, like, an overnight success. Uh, it's definitely, I think, a tortoise in the hare sort of situation. You, if you make a habit out of it, you'll see this stuff sort of creep up. And next thing you know, you're, like, trying to solve a problem and you're like, wait, I actually know how to do this. Uh, and then you're like, oh wait, I'm helping other people figure it out. This is weird. Um, and I think also for people who have those skills and want to share with them, I think being able to do this on a weekly basis is, it feels so insignificant in the moment, but those actions like compound over time and even like a simple thing that you might do to like help explain something to somebody or show them how something works and then you you know move on with your life and meanwhile they've like blossomed an entire career you know because you taught them how to debug a statement or or how to use like notepad to you know run python scripts uh so those little things really do add up and matter uh, and i think having i was thinking a lot about how having an accessible community is so important like I was able to go to these conferences and meet with people. The conferences were cheap. People like said, sure, hitch a ride with me. Yes, you can crash at my place. And as someone who comes from a working class background, that like allowed me to be exposed to these fields and these careers uh, in ways that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And uh, things to think about like sort of what's next. It, like, you know, this is just one story and I have uh, plenty of my own like privileges and backgrounds that allowed this to work for me, um, but especially thinking like, as I was reflecting back, I'm like, wow, a lot of this stuff revolves around like uh, hanging out in person with people, which is something that we struggle to do now. <laughs> um, so I don't really, I don't have an answer to that. Like what's next? Like what do the next 10 years look like? You know, as we're trying these sort of hybrid models, I would encourage all of us to like think and discuss about. Uh, it's also true that like burnout is an issue with any like volunteer organization and you know, people have come and gone in this community, which is also kind of the nature of the way it is, but it makes me wonder if there's ways to keep or make things more sustainable. Uh, I've been wondering why I'm so tired all the time. I'm sure you might like feel similarly after these past two years. Looking back on all this, I'm like, how did I do all that? I don't, I don't think I could do it now. I think I would take a nap. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just figured I'd, I'd leave you with that. Feel free to talk to me afterwards. And uh, I just uh, encourage us all to kind of like, you know, celebrate where we've been and also think about where we might head next. So thanks. Thanks.